we had a situation where life at home wasn't good for either yeah, of us. So. So we didn't have anywhere to live. So I got up the following morning and walked into the bank. And they told me I'd got breast cancer. The highlight of our 50th wedding anniversary is to spend it with Ronnie Joe and Ty Gilgit. Stars fall at my feet, keep me grounded as I reach. Higher than I see, is there something there for me? Swadika, hello everyone, Tiger Gip. And Farna Joe. We are on our way to Milano. We are meeting up with uh, some subscribers and our friends. Mick and Maria, we actually had dinner with them last night at the uh, German restaurant here in town. We're gonna go meet them for breakfast. They have an interesting story of trials and tribulations over the past 50 years that they will share with us. We are here at one of our favorite places, Milano Cafe Home and Garden. Link in the description and pin comment of this video. Please excuse the noise because it's going to be a little loud um, and all the wind is picking up, but this place is busy. Anyway, we're here with uh, Mick and Maria again, and uh, like I was saying to you guys, I mean, they have a, a story that's unbelievable. We like to share people's stories, but this is one of the, the best success stories we've actually heard, or best life stories, that is. So uh, we're going we're gonna to introduce you to them and um, let them tell their story. So, uh, Mickey, it was great meeting you and Maria again. We really had an awesome time at dinner last night. We didn't pull the camera out. We just wanted to, to enjoy the moment. Where are you guys from? <laughs> we're from England. From England. From Stoke-on-Trent yes. in England, which is uh, the potteries. They call it the potteries. So we're from England. And you were telling me that you guys got married when Maria was 16 and yes. you were 18? I was, yes. I was, I was 19, I was, um, I was 19 on the 7th of February and married on the 17th, so I was just 19. What, what age did you meet each other? Uh, 12. Uh, I think, I, 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 met, I met Maria, she never, she didn't I remember. remember. I, I remember seeing a walk, I had to go to her dad's house one day to collect uh, a ladder. And she came in with the brothers, two young brothers, and I saw her that day. And uh, she'd be, I would be 13, and would be 11. And uh, the next time I saw her, um, she was 13, 15. and I was 15 at the youth club. And then I linked it to, oh, I remember you, you were, you know, and that was how we met. So then we started seeing each other at the youth club. We had a situation where life at home wasn't good for either yeah, of us. So. Um, we we got to a point where we wanted to wait until I was 21 and Maria was 19. That was the plan, but because of the situation, we decided let's let's go now. You know, we'll get married and go. So so that was it. Yeah. That's what we did. Yeah. So where did you live? We didn't have anywhere to live. Um, <clears throat> we talked about if we had to do, we'd live in a tent or a caravan or a caravan or something. We'd live anywhere. So that was that was the that was the start. Uh, my dad said, um, "If you want to come and live with us, you have, you have six weeks. After six weeks, you have you out, you leave." And my father was the type of person. If he said six weeks, it was six, not five or four. It was six. So we had six weeks to think about what we were going to do. So, so what did you do? We went. I went into town with my father-in-law mixed up and um, we saw a sign in a window in a house for sale or to rent so when Mick got in from work that night um, I explained about because we've been to see numerous properties and for whatever reason we didn't get them we wouldn't um, rent to us we the following morning we, we went down to see the ladies called Mrs Bushell and uh, she didn't want to rent she wanted to sell so we thought, how is this going to happen? We have no money or anything. So um, Mick just walked into the local bank one day and just said, do we want to buy a house? <laughs> how did that work out, Mick? And that was it. <laughs> well, the morning I woke up, this following morning after the lady told us she didn't want to rent anymore. She, <clears throat> and I said, OK, well, we'll go to the bank. That's the only thing I can think of. So I got up the following morning, walked into the bank, never been in a bank in my life, 
knew nothing about bank accounts or banking or anything. Um, I walked in and the lady on the desk said, can I help? And I said, well, yes, I hope so. I want to borrow some money to buy a house. She said, are you a, are you a customer at the bank? And I said, no. And she said, have you got an appointment to see the manager? And I said, no. And just then the door opened to the manager's office and he said, can I help you? And I said, well, I hope so. I said, I'm looking to borrow some money to buy a house. So he said, um, are you a customer at the bank? I said, no. So he said, OK, come in. So I went into his office and uh, he said, uh, why are you wanting to buy a house? I explained the situation at home and that we just got married. I explained all this and I told him the house was five minutes walk away and uh, the bank manager took his jacket off, off the stand, put his jacket on. He said, follow me. And out the bank I came, 19 years old, just 19, and followed him up the road to where this house was for sale. And he looked around the house and he said, OK, come back with me to the bank. So he took me to the bank and he said to me, he said, um, uh, I'm going to trust you that you can, uh, you're can. you going to pay this money back. And I said, well, I will, I won't. I won't I'll, I'll never, ever let you down. I'll always pay the money back. And he said, OK, then. He said, I'm going to lend you the, the money to buy the house. So this was how we how we started. This this guy was amazing. Yes. For, for me to, 19 years of age, walking off the street, I hadn't got a clue what I was doing, apart from just asking someone to give me the money to buy a house, which was £1,800 at the time in 1973, 1800 The lady that was selling the house then, two days later, came back to me and she said, I'm putting the price up to 2000 because her son had told her she would have to pay tax. So I went back to the bank manager, who asked me to go and fetch the lady to the bank. He explained that you won't have to pay any tax because it's your property. She wouldn't accept that, she wanted the 2000 So at that, the bank manager asked her to leave and, and said to me, do you, want to, do you want to pay the extra 200 And I said, well, you're going to lend it me, yes, I don't have anything. So at that, he, um, he, offered to, he offered to give me another 2000 He then asked me, do you have, um, do you have any furniture? And I said, no. He said, do you have nothing? I said, no. People have offered to give us some little things. I said, he said, do you have a bed? I said, no. Cooker? No. Do you have a carpet? I said, no. So he said, okay, do you want to borrow another 200 to buy these things with? Because you're going to need these. And I said, well, if you lend me the money, yes, I'll have it. He lent us the 200, extra 200 to buy the furniture. And uh, rang his friends who was the lawyer and um, his golf partner and said could you uh, sort this out quickly because he's only got five weeks left before they move in which he did and and uh, literally bang on six weeks we moved into this new house so the bank manager says you need to open an account today um, so i can put the money into the account so when the lawyer calls you to go and do the pay sign the papers that you then have the money to give him a check. And I said, I don't, don't have any money to open an account with. So the bank manager took his wallet out and gave me five pound out of his wallet. And said to me, go to the desk and the girl, tell the girl you want to open an account and give her the five pound. He said, but I want you to bring it back on the day you get paid, which was on Friday, uh, which I did. I went back on the Friday, gave him the five pound back, but they he'd lent me. So uh, that was basically it, I, I, we had nothing. And we lived in the house for 40 years. For 40 years. Did you ever go thank the bank manager for everything yes. he did for you guys? Yeah. Um, I went back uh, a short time later because it, one thing he, he, he made me promise that if I ever needed any money mm. uh, to go back and see him, don't go to loan sharks and all these things, and go to him and he would look after me. So I, I, I promised this is what I would do. Uh, late, later on, uh, maybe a year, year and a half later, we wanted to buy a car and uh, we hadn't got the, f the full amount to buy the car so I went back to the bank to ask if I could 
um, borrow some more money to buy the car. And when I got there, the, I'm sure the bank manager's name was uh, Mr. Wilcox. Mm. And I walked in and I asked, I said to the girl, could I see Mr. Wilcox? And uh, she said, no, we have a new bank manager. And they called the new bank manager. He called me in and he said, uh, how can I help you? And I said, well, I came to see Mr. Wilcox. So I want to borrow some money. He said Mr. Wilcox died last year. Oh, wow. So he must have died within a few months of, um, of, of us having the house. The new bank manager then goes to say to me, um, well, looking at your your um, situation, you, um, you, you had a loan from the bank. I said, no, I had a mortgage. And he said, no, you didn't. He said, Mr. Wilcock gave you a loan. And I don't know why you got the loan, because you didn't have any capital or anything. I don't know why he's done this, because I would certainly not have done this if you'd have walked into my bank. And I said, well, I'm glad I didn't walk into your bank. I said, and based on that, um, I don't like your attitude. And I left. And uh, I left the bank. I, I uh, left that bank and went to another bank. I went from a high with Mr. Wilcox doing everything for me to a low with the next one I went to see who just didn't want to help me, didn't want to give me any money, challenged me on everything I said, so I left. But this bank manager, I mean, he didn't know you, you had no money no. in your pocket, you no. had no no experience in a bank at all, No. and from nowhere, a stranger, he decided he was going to reach out and he was going to bless you and help you yeah. and your wife. Yeah, that's right. That's What an amazing story. Sometimes we have people put in our life, we don't know the reasons, but this gentleman was definitely put in your, your, your life for a, a reason. Yeah, you know? and, and, and for, for, for the years since, and now, as I say, 50 years on, I still question, um, why why did he do that for me you know why what what made him think when I walked in that bank that day I'm gonna help this guy you know um, he could he, he could have helped anyone yeah it, I was there for a reason must have been just on that moment I walked in that bank and he, he the, guy, the guy was there yes. tell me about your, your job late later on later on um, um, when, when we, as, the, as the children, because we had two beautiful children, we have two lovely daughters, and uh, we have three gorgeous grandkids, and a, and a great grandson now. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 69. It's amazing. <laughs> you don't look 69. 66. 66. <laughs> yeah. And 50 years together. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I went to work voluntary. I went to work in a, a residential school voluntary with children with behavioural difficulties and uh, social and emotional difficulties and I spent the next 26 years um, working, working my way up. And, okay, uh, well we'll talk about that in a minute, but first yeah. enjoy your breakfast. Uh, you got the omelette and bacon. Yeah. And Maria has the fruit salad. Yeah, it's beautiful. Awesome. All right, so eat and we'll continue where we stopped on this, uh, on this video. Alrighty, so breakfast was delicious. How was it for you guys? Excellent, excellent. Absolutely gorgeous. Would oh, you yes. recommend this place? This is, yes, yes. Definitely. It's really, really nice. Yeah. We uh, wanted to come and to the stay in the accommodation here, but it's fully it's full. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a video on that. Honestly, yeah. I've been coming here for so long, I didn't even know they had rooms for rent, but Gift just told me. <laughs> so, continuing on, um, so you, you started working for like a boys, uh, underprivileged boys? Or yeah, the, 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 sc the school was a residential school uh, for boys with uh, social and emotional difficulties, behavior difficulties. I went started as a volunteer one night a week, um, uh, taking uh, one, one boy fishing. From that I ended up going full time. I was offered a job and went full time. So I spent the next 26 years of my life working uh, with these and some amazing children you know a lot of the children that people had given up on didn't want you know maybe been in four or five different schools and nobody wanted to work with them so i had this opportunity to work with them which was for me it was a dream dream job uh, and i did i did that up until uh 2011. so did you retire from there yes so i took early retirement um, I applied for early retirement uh, situation uh, at home with, with Maria, uh, she, with the health, and uh, so I decided that I wanted to um, 
take the time to be with Maria then to spend the rest of my time uh, going through treatment with Maria she was having. So what happened Maria? We, we went on holiday in 2011 to Catalonia and we came back uh, after the summer. Uh, I'd had a mammogram before I, I went on holiday and um, expecting everything to be fine when we got back. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I had numerous letters asking me to go back to the hospital for uh, another test. Anyway, we went back, I had um, another scan, I saw the doctors and they told me I'd got breast cancer. Uh, I had the biopsy and lumpectomy and um, in between you have to wait three weeks for all um, test results. And um, I was told I had breast cancer, the type of cancer that it was, I needed two years of treatment which was um, chemotherapy, radiotherapy and Herceptin. So tamoxifen, uh, for, tamoxifen ten for 10 years I had to take that, which I finished uh, last year, the year before I think, um, which now I've actually finished completely all medication, been discharged, survivor of cancer and I feel like me again. You got diagnosed because you did your annual checkup. Yes. So well, every three years. So that's what. And it was it, yes, it was on the the mammogram that I had. They they saw the lump there. So yeah, I recommend all women to make sure they have the mammograms. And when do they start that? What what age do you usually? Um, I think they brought the age down now, but I think it was about. Is it about? 50. 50? I think it was 50. Unless, of course, a Unless lady feels course, something. Yes, <clears throat> or it, they, it runs in the family. In my case, <coughs> it didn't. I was just unlucky. Wow, wow. Yeah. So you're a survivor of breast cancer. Yes. And what, what is the survival rate? Do you even know? Um, I think it's a lot higher now than it used to be. It's called. So that's really. good news. So that's good news. You also took part in a trial. I had two trials. I had a trial for radiotherapy. Uh, you have five days of radiotherapy to the equivalent of 25 days. So I had the same amount for over five days. I suppose just to see what the effect is so is ladies can get the their treatment um, in a shorter period of time because 25 treatments is a long time. And then I was in trials for, um, what was that for? Tamoxifen. Tamoxifen trials, because I think women used to be on it for 20 years, and I was on it for 10. And hopefully they maybe bring it down to five years. Mm -hmm. And then you guys decided you were leaving England. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened then is when once Maria was diagnosed, with cancer, when, when we realised that it was a, an aggressive form of cancer that she had, which it was, uh, and then knowing what was going to happen then over the next two years, chemotherapy and everything else, um, I decided to take early retirement and the authority were very good. They allowed me to go two years early and made my fencing up so I could spend that time with her. Um, we also had a little house in Capolonia in Greece that we bought in 2007. It was going to be our retirement home when I was 65. That was the plan. Um, once Maria had gone through the two years of treatment, I said, why are we going to wait? Why wait till we're 65? Why not go now? So we spoke with the children. Our children in their 40s now anyway, but we spoke to our children and grandchildren. We explained why we want to go. And they said, go. Go and do it. Yeah. We'll, we can come and visit you and have a free holiday. <laughs> so we said, okay. So we, we put our little house on the market that we bought when we, we first got married. and uh, That you paid £2,000 for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and how much did you sell that house for? I think in the end it was 110000 we sold it for. I think that's a good return on investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, a, a young guy came along, a single guy, came and looked at us. Uh, he looked at... Um, he looked at 20 houses that week and he came and uh, within 15 minutes of looking at our house, he said, I want it. Yeah. 
Wow. He paid me the asking price and away we went. So the gentleman that initially lent you the 2,000 pounds basically gave you guys a great life in the house for four, over 40 years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And when we look back, uh, when we look back at that, we we often think, where would we have been? Where would we have gone? How, how, how would our life have mapped out if we, had to, if we hadn't met that bank manager Mr. that Will day? Cox. If I hadn't walked into the bank that day? I think one thing yeah. once, um, I think I said this to you before, but we, when, when someone says to you, um, you have cancer, no one, no one knows what that feeling is like to be told that you're the one who has cancer. So Maria has got this feeling of where do I go now, what's going to happen and everything else. For me, it was like, it was a bolt out of the blue when I when it, when we when we went to the hospital and we got told it, it, I couldn't register it wouldn't register and one of the things that was was going through my mind all the time that I want to try and take this away you know and, and you can't do that so the feeling for me was helpless I packed my job in working in the school with these with these children that, that, that really didn't want me to leave they were asking me not to go. I was then in a situation where I'm looking after Maria feeling helpless, that I couldn't do anything. Maria was reassuring me, saying, but just be here with me, just go into the chemo and do it. Yeah. it that, that's all I want you to do. I don't need anything else, you know? But then you started planning little trips. So I thought to myself, how can I, how can I turn this negative into a positive? Because that's, that's how I always look at things. So I said to Maria, when you have the first week's chemo, you're always really ill, really sick. She's in bed, she doesn't go anywhere. The second week, she starts moving around a bit, she's okay. The third week, she picks up and she's, she's back on form. But then on the Monday of the third week, on the next week, she goes back in again and has the treatment, and we go back to square one. So it's a three-week cycle. Wow. One week really ill, second week picking up, the third week feeling a lot better, and bang, back down to that again. And this went on for six months with the chemo. Yeah. So for me I thought how can how can we do something? So what we did was I suggested that at the end of the third week when you're feeling well, why don't we go away for the weekend? Book a hotel somewhere, go and have a weekend away. And then on Monday, come back on the Sunday night, on Monday morning then you had your treatment. Mm -hmm. So every every third week on the Friday we booked a hotel in different parts of the country. So what we did then focused on that. So during that, them bad periods, we were thinking, okay, well, in another week's time, we're going away. Well, that's a good, actually, that's a good idea. So I guess what a lot of people are going to want to know, me included, although I'll never get to, to enjoy this, what is the secret to a 50-year marriage? Unfortunately, not many marriages last nowadays. A lot of um, marriages end in divorce. Yeah. So is there a secret to success? I mean... Is one who is Maria just a boss and you just listen to what she says? Most of the time. <laughs> That's not true. No. <laughs> but what would you say? What, what, what would you say? I mean, you've been together 50 years and I know for you it's probably easy, but what do you think that, that secret is? It I don't know. Uh, for, uh, Maria can speak to herself, but for me personally, uh, my, my family, I grew up in a family that was um, uh, a really tight knit family, although it was strict and everything else, but we were really tight knit. So I have uh, I have a, an old one older sister than me. Um, she's been married now for 52 years. So then there's me now 50 years. It was just it was just that um, I think it was at that time you, um, when, when you when you got married, you, you know you, your parents. Well, my parents said to me, when you leave, you don't come back. You make a life for yourself. Don't come here complaining because things are not right. Can I come home because you're not coming? You know, you make your life, you make your bed, you lie in it. Yeah. That's what my dad said to me. And I said, oh, I'll never come and ask you for anything. You know, we'll just get on with life. And that was basically what we've done. Every time something's cropped up that's been a we've challenge just to us. We've worked it out together, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and look at the positives in life. Too many people focus on the negatives, you know, of life instead of looking at the positives. Yeah. For me personally, I, I think life is simple, but we make it difficult. 
Yeah, I, I agree. We want, we want the latest iPhone, we want a new car, a new house. We want, and then you have to work to pay for all that seven days a week, so you spend no time together. You know, and I think for us, we've never had a new car, we've never had a new house, we've never had anything new. Everything's been second hand. But, uh, but we, 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 we enjoy a life now where we don't have any stress. Yeah. We come and go when we want, you know, we enjoy life. And also for us to try and, as we go through life, we try and help other people. So if someone, we know somebody who's struggling for some reason, um, we, we, we try to be there for them as well. So it's, and that's the way we are. We, we, you can't change the way you are. That's the way. Yeah. When you when you buy a property, it's just it's just bricks and mortar. It's a home. It's a house. Right. What you do with it makes it a home. Once you leave that, once you leave that house, it becomes a house again. The next person coming along makes it their home. You know. So I'd never put that much store on a house. You know. Um, it's more important for us that we have a nice home. What an amazing, amazing story. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you. This is um, a gift from Catalonia. It's called the Greek Eye. And um, the symbol of it is that you bite the friends um, and it represents... Um, the Greeks believe that... And I think we also believe that it keeps away bad thoughts from other people. It, it gives you strength. Uh, anything yeah. else? It's, 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 the, the Greek people say it's, it's to stop the bad and negative thoughts negative entering, thoughts, your, entering yeah. your house. So what they do, yeah. they have these and they hang them over the door. And uh, that way you're, you're, you don't get uh, people's negative thoughts. Yeah, and they stay out, out of your house and out of your lives. And, um, and when the, we highlight, the highlight of our 50th wedding anniversary is to spend it with um, Father and Joe and Ty Gilgit. Wow, that's Which we you. have followed for three years. Yeah. And for the rest of our life now, when people say, to, well, where were you on your golden anniversary? I said, well, we were in uh, Pratchett Kitty Can having a meal with Joe and Gift. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. We feel privileged and and special that you you wanted to spend that special day with us and yeah. we really enjoyed dinner last night as well as yes. uh, breakfast yeah. this morning and thank you so much for this gift because we do have negativity trying to come into our life into uh -huh. our channel yeah but we always push back we yeah. delete the negativity yeah. we, but this hopefully will protect us and we will hang it, will. it we will hang it outside our door yes. when we get home yeah we have a, we have one outside our door yes our and granddaughter one inside our granddaughter has one small one inside her bedroom window and she said since she's put since she's put it up she doesn't feel like she gets any negativity in her room now so yeah. my uh, my role as a behavior specialist so i understand uh, about behavior yeah, and when you get people like that, sometimes it's uh, it's, it's almost like it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a form of attention-seeking behaviour because they haven't got anything else going on in their life. So we'll, let's wind you up, we'll, we'll come back at us, and then we'll have a go. At yeah, yeah, they try to get a rise. And then you feed you feeding into that negativity. So yeah. it's the best thing what you say, yeah. just ignore it. I agree, one hundred percent. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. We love welcome. meeting you guys. I know we're going to be friends forever. Yes. yes. And we'll stay in touch. And hopefully one day, Gift and I can come to Greece and yes. meet up with you guys. You're welcome. Yes. You're a, welcome. We, we have a we have a little house there. You're house welcome to you use. Welcome you can to come, come and stay use. with us. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you again. Yeah. It, we're, we're still going to hang out, but we're just going yeah. to end the video yeah. now. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching our video. Nakha, love you all. Nakha, love you all. Bye bye. Nakha, bye bye. Nakha, bye bye.